Howdy. I'm Cyberax with Outlandishly Crafted. And today we're going to be talking about something everybody wants to talk about, but nobody wants to talk about, but everybody's talking about AI. Yep, that's right. The Blockpinch add-on server recently had a question about AI and if we should use the the help information in the um, the Discord channels to build a data set for a help AI for Blockbench or Bedrock or all these things that we're doing. And there was a lot of conversations. Uh, in the six hours, there was 100 posts, somewhere around 200 posts uh, an hour. The most active conversation I've ever seen in four years doing this. More active than Java versus Bedrock. More active than HD versus Polymash versus Voxel. So, a lot of people in the conversation didn't really seem like they had actually used AI. Um, it seems like they were going off of the movies or uh, the media or fear or all of these other things versus uh, what is AI as a tool? How, how do I use it? Is it, is it usable? Um, what can I do with it? What are people doing with it right now? Um, and I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, it's just going to break everything and make everything horrible. So I wanted to just run through some things. So we're going to do this live. I haven't really thought much of it. We're just going to throw this in. So right off the bat, I need 50. Oh, I don't know why I did that. I need 50 space foods. Um, keep in mind that we're in the MC Bedrock Dev Assistant, and that does take pl uh, plus. Also, as a note for partners and anybody in a NDA, uh, plus and regular chat GPT and most AI services violate your NDA. Um, you need to make sure that you're in a Teams account. That's $25 a month. That's a Teams account. You need more than two users to get a Teams account. Teams accounts do not violate NDA because they are not being added into the chat GPT information. So anything that you put in normal chat GPT or any AI on the market right now is typically getting added and data mined back into the system. So please keep that in mind and do not break your NDAs. So here we go. It gave us some food. Awesome. So what we're going to do next is we're going to say what I want to do is I want to make that food item into something, right? So I want to take this um, food. Just having a list doesn't do us much good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say using this example right here, we're going to make some items. So we're going to say... <clears throat> Oh, shoot, I needed to save that, sorry. Uh, it, in JSON, a comment's not valid, so if you don't want the GPT to have some issues with it, you can tell it about it to just delete or skip it, or you can say, um, you know, just delete it yourself before you put the template in. So I'm going to give it, two different templates, which is interesting. Uh, or maybe we won't. Hold on. Let's see. Do I have another one? I have flowers. Um, drinkable mug. Yeah, we could try it. Oh, come on. Okay. So we're going to give it these two files. We're going to say using this template and these files make 50 food food items using the names above <clears throat> now i think if we wanted to we could also say Because food has effects, we could say um,
then we could say here is an example of the effects code shown in mugs. Now this is more than I'd normally do. I'd normally just do the names first and then go back through. But I want to see how um, how how much we can do uh, just right here. So I'm gonna grab. Oh, I can't just grab a list of all of the uh, food effects, can I? Shoot, hold on. Let me see if I can. I could. Uh, try to rely on it to do it for me but I don't know how well it knows all of, what why is there no documentation huh. let's just ask it to do it um Yeah, let's just see what it does. Provide And then we just let it go for a sec. Now, you could also take 50 files. So after it gives us the zip, we could take the zip and give it back to it. So you, a lot of people are like, oh, there's not enough space to copy the code in. And you're still thinking like you got to copy and paste code in. You can just put the files in or you could just put a thousand files in a zip and put that in there. Um, I've done, you know, 50,000 function commands uh, in one function with no problem. I've done a hundred uh, images where I had a hundred images and I needed it to combine two images together for an overlay. Um, and just put it in a zip and give it the zip. So don't think that you know, so far, the only code I've actually given it is just this is the example of what the effects would be, mainly because these files are different. Normally, I'd give it two of the same files with just the name difference so that it can distinguish it. But this is a good example for you to see how smart it is. It, I think a lot of people are thinking, AI, oh, you're just going to say, here, do it. You're, that's not how this works. It's a tool. A, a nail gun does not just go build a house. You still have to design the house and you still have to put it together and you still have to, you know, quality check and you got to go through the process and you got to pick up the nail gun and, and point it in the right spot and, and do the work. This is just a tool, so you have to do all of those same things the same way. You got to use it as a tool. So let's see, you can click it and see what it's doing. It's just going through and randomizing all those guys. Most people don't understand that all AI is doing is just script writing most of the time. So it made a list of all of the effects. It's randomizing those effects in a script. And it's literally just using, in essence, Python to do what we wanted out of the names. It, it's kind of a crazy concept. Uh, oh, it error corrected itself too there. Now, one of the things I do suggest you do is ask it to verify when it does something because there are times that the script's wrong and it just puts things out of order and so you, there's no reason why you can't just ask it and say hey prove it show me that you did this show me what's in the zip file show me what's in the file um, give me evidence and if it messed up it will find that it messed up in that check and then it will fix itself so majority of times if I do find an issue and I challenge it it'll fix it for me oh you can see it failed so that's interesting let's try it again that's not a good a good example of our process here but 
it's AI failure is part of the thing. The reason why we want to get a good data set from the bedrock community is so we have less of these failures and it takes less um, baby. For me to do this by hand, to type in and create 50 files, 50 food items with the different names, go through and do all of the different changes, it's insane. It's just so time consuming. And I think it's where a lot of people get burned out is in the weeds of trying to ship an add on um, when scripting and, and AI could do this for you. Now, you could go learn Python and you could become a coding and scripting pro, and that could be your specialty. But I don't want to be a scripting pro. That's not the specialty I want to do. I want to be a game developer. I want to make creative things in a 3D environment. I don't want to be sitting in a code box typing out the script so I can get items into my game. I'm more than happy to have an AI do the shit work for me that I don't want to do and I can't seem to get an intern or anyone else to do for me. Uh, it still seems like it's not liking it. What is it getting stuck on? I'm worried it's because of the difference between those two files. Hopefully. Hopefully it's going to fix it. Um, in the worst case, this is where we get stuck is it will get into a loop where it can't fix something or it can't do something and then sometimes it gets in the loop it fails a few times and then just does it it's just done so i don't know but the downside of ai is you spend your time doing this stuff because the ai isn't built smart enough or well enough yet so for this the solution of people saying oh ai sucks let's just never use it or make it better the reason why it sucks is because it's not getting enough information and the information we need. And the more we can train it on just JSON and Bedrock and JS versus it knowing everything else in the world, the better it will be. In a lot of cases, having an AI that knows less is better, not knowing more. General AIs are fine for general tasks, but we're doing specific tasks, so we really need a very specific AI for that. So come on, baby. Just do it. Is it going to? Is it going to? Nope. Not going to. So let's go back to here. And let's say... Using the templates in these files, make 50 food items with the na names above. And let's see if it will just do that. Oh, I didn't tell it to do it as a zip file. Now, when it's good, the AI right now, I think the AI in GPT-4 is a 10-year-old with like a 1,000 IQ. When it's good, it really goes good. But when it's bad, it goes really bad. And you just spend hours spending and spending, wasting your time. That's, that's what we've got to fix. We've got to get out the bad times and get, you know, the good times functioning better. Come on, little guy. Come on, little guy. Uh, one of the things that in the past when I've done this, keep in mind, I didn't really plan this out, but I normally would have put the first name in the first box so that Apple would mean something. It's still scripting. It's still doing comparison. Let's see what it's complaining about. Zip file's not defined. Weird. 
So it failed once and then it succeeded the next time. So let's take that file now and let's put it somewhere and we'll just go open it and see what it looks like. So I've got my file. So here's our items. And let's open one. Of, oh, it's not going to open it right. Son of a gun. Okay, let's do that again. So let's say uh, export. Open. Okay, so we have 50 and food. No effects. So that worked really, I mean, that worked well. It did, it did what, sorry, this is so uh, hard to read, but it did pretty good. Um, I'm not sure I like the hyphen. I think I would probably tell it to not use hyphens in the future. I'm not sure if that's a valid, um, a valid thing. Also, if you notice, it made the namespace space food because I didn't define it. So if we were going to do this again to optimize this better, what we would do is we would say um, using the above names. And we just give it an example. So we'd say, let me look in that file. And yeah, I think a lot of you are probably thinking, oh man, you're having to treat it like a 10 year old. Like, I, yeah, people think that somehow this is like magic and AI is just going to magically read your brain and, and just do it. It The problem is AI is going to give us the ability to do anything. Being able to do nothing and being able to do anything have exactly the same problems. It Unless you are very specific and explain it to it, it's not going to understand what you want because it, it can do anything. So you have to be very specific with it and say, okay, well, this is how this should look. Um, make sure hyphens are replaced with underscores. And then let's try the same process again. So then we say, okay, Using the template and the files, blah, 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 as provide, provide a zip, and then identify, use Apple 3D equals. So we're just trying to attach where in that field. And I think if you were doing just normal scripting, you'd have to do this as well. You'd have to build out what number, what letters, where, between what, it, if you were scraping this or if you were scripting it in, um, you'd have the same problem. So I don't think the AI changes a lot of it. Now, will it get a little better and I should just be able to say create 50 items with these names? Um, yeah, if we get a good data set and a AI that's trained and focused specifically at Bedrock, I think that is something that we could do and it is something that would make life a lot better. For a lot of people, it's, oh, that's just going to make things be really not creative and poor and low quality. Well, you can go to item creator right now and do the same thing and just make up the name, but you have to waste your time doing it. The difference is, is this speeds that process up and allows me to be creative in the places I want to be creative. It allows me to be creative in the places that creativity is useful and helpful. I personally do not think creativity needs to be in the name of my food, my space food. The AI can do that. I don't care if it's called hydroponic grown spinach. I don't I don't care what these are 
I might make them shorter, but this isn't where I want my creativity to go. AI allows us to put the creativity where we want it to be. See the difference? Right now, I have to, I'm forced to do every step, every pace of the way, whether I want to or not, whether it's part of my desire or my creativity, I, I have to do it. Okay, so now we've got our proper namespace and we've got our name in there and all of it's done. So this took us because, you know, we tried to do too much at the beginning, quite a while. I, I guess maybe this is about 15 to 30 minutes overall. Um, but you kind of see the whole process. It would have taken me, uh, maybe I could make one item file. I have to type in the name. I have to save it. I have to redo another one. So maybe I could do... Even if I did one a minute, that's 50 minutes. And I don't think I could do one a minute. So maybe I could do one every two minutes. So that's um, almost an hour and 40 minutes to physically type out what this did. And, you know, when I got it set up right and I wasn't the problem, then it did it in a minute. Now, we could take the same thing and we could give it back that space food and now we could say now give now update each food component component with an effect with one of the oh I need to put a code box in that's funny that's my discord so nausea equals you know, what's another one we could put in there? Blindness. Now, because I gave it a zip and I told it to do a zip last time, it should assume I want to zip back. Um, it doesn't always. It depends on how long your conversation is. If you've been having the conversation for a while, a lot of times it will just keep doing what you previously asked. But I, I could have said in here and provide it as a zip for download. Um, I shouldn't need to, though. It just depends where you're at in, the, in it. So now that we've done this stop half, how long do you think it would take you to go through 50 it food items and assign a random effect to each of them? I think a lot of people in this side of it say, well, I could just write this script in Python or I could just use... Uh, VS Code and some plugin to just duplicate files and uh, the names are kind of an issue, but I could figure that out. Um, but what about randomizing the effect for food? Maybe you say, well, I don't, I don't want to have a random effect. Maybe I want to think through all my effects. Um, sure, that's fine. Um, maybe you want it to be logical that a blueberry has some thing, but maybe you don't, maybe you don't care. Uh, this just knocked out 50 food item effects in a minute. I don't think glowing is a food item effect though. So that's another thing you're going to have to check. 
is it using valid food item in our list? Is glowing? No, glowing is not one. So that that is where AI has issues. Now, the reason it has those issues is because it's not trained well enough. So training is what helps solve this. Um, the other thing that would help this just in a normal workflow is I'm just being lazy here. I should have listed what I want it to pick from. So that would have solved this if I just listed. Because in all reality, I don't want most of these to be listed, right? Um, so I could say use any effect in um, this list. So then I'd say absorption. Um, blindness and I would just list them out now I could get these from the website as well and so on so you could say and then it would just use them right from there so that's it this is basically the usage of it it does not just held to the JSON um, like I said, we could take pictures and add an overlay to pictures. We could go through a ton of different things. But when it works, it works fast. It works easy. It just does it. When it doesn't work, you get into these issues of trying to, you know, go through and figure out what you messed up. Or maybe it adds something stupid. One of the worst ones I had was um, it added a, a apostrophe or something for a name, like a mick. And, or a mister or a dot, a period. It, so sometimes when you're doing this, it's worth saying um, create a, a list using approved um, characters. So no dashes, periods, whatever. The better it's trained, the more it will just do that for us. So that's it. Again, I'm CyberX with Outlandishly Crafted. And this has been a guide on AI and using AI, the pros, the cons, does it work, does it not work. You can see sometimes it's great, sometimes it's horrible. If you have any more questions or you would like help in your partner or studio, hit me up and I can help get your staff working. I think that you see that when it works, man, it sure is a 10x um, or a 100x if I can just put in and create 50 items instead of paying staff you know, two, three hours to do the same thing. So having staff be able to do this stuff, I think is pretty important and really does make a difference in the quality of the packs and what you're able to do. If I by myself am able to do 500 items and you with the studio are only able to do 50 items because of staff and time limitations, you're at a huge disadvantage. Even if those 50 items are perfectly customized and all oh, so creative will the customer care when they're trying to buy something and their ten dollars is going into buying 50 food items versus 500 food items um i don't i don't know i don't think so i think they're going to be much more happy to have a lot of them and have a variety uh, because it's food they all pretty much do the same things anyways so that's uh, a lot of what's going on in the AI industry. If you have some input, put it in the comments. I know this is a decis uh, divisive subject. Uh, right now it's about 60-40 pro to con. And those people that are against it are really passionate. So if you are against AI, you know, maybe just check uh, your passion. There's no reason to leave or delete all your information or, or walk off and, and you know, quit uh, in the... The Discord usage of the data is only for those who opt in anyway. So it's only the people that opt in that their info in the dev channels would be used. And all of it gets reviewed and checked and blah, blah, blah. All those concerns are managed. So make sure if you have some feedback or input or pros and cons or you have more questions about how to do it or more things, just reach out to CyberX in the comments or hit me up in the Discord. We do have our own Discord channel, Bedrock HD. You can come join us. There's a self-help uh, part over there as well. And there are, all these guides are in there. So if you got any more, let me know. Once again, I'm CyberX with Outlandishly Crafted, and this has been a guide on AI. Sorry we've gone a little long today. 
Um, but AI is a, a big subject, and I wanted to actually do it in real time with you guys. And you see, real time failures and pros. There you go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and 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 lift up all of those overlords on YouTube. Because if we don't make them happy, you're not gonna see these guides.